you know, love how it's, you know, the the purity of the tournament and what it's been. It's pretty special. I think we have to look at every option, right? But also, uh, I'm not there yet with that. I would like to hear more how that works, but uh, I do defer. I do listen to guys who have done it before, right? And uh, Leonard is one of the great minds in our game. And, uh, you know, I think college basketball is at a time now where we have to con constantly evolve and figure out the best way to move forward. And it looks very different in 2022. I don't think if 10 years ago you said where we are, you'd probably, you know, have a lot of concerns or questions, but we're in a good spot and we have to continue to make sure we are in, in, a, in a great spot moving forward. John, John Kate Payne Kate was saying today that like he goes to bed at night and thinks about the responsibility of taking over at his alma mater and he wakes up and thinks about it. Have you had a, a similar experience to that at all? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a lot of empathy for how Kenny could feel that way. And, um, you know, it's, it's, I think, just a surreal feeling, right? Like the decision you make when you're 16, 17, or 18, you know, where you go to that school, never once it crossed my mind, you know, oh, and then you're going to come back and be the, it just, it just evolves. And the responsibility is great. I, I feel that responsibility, not just being the head coach to be successful, but to carry the culture for it. Uh, and we built up a, what Coach K has done throughout his time. And even before Coach K, there's been an incredible legacy that's been built. And I, I feel responsible to carry that culture forward. Uh, while also being innovative, creative in 2022 of uh, what's required as a head coach. You've had more work to do with a young team. I mean, you're totally learning these guys for the first time in a lot of cases. How is that chemistry coming along? And, and what are some of the challenges to work with so many new guys? I, well, I think the, the challenge is you're, you're coaching our players Really, none of them, even Jeremy's in a new spot, they, they're still figuring out who they are. And so you're trying to coach them on where they are right now, but also who they can be this season. And that's a delicate balance that we've continued to have to find, and hopefully we do find at some point. Yeah, that's, that's the goal. Uh, but on the bright side is all of them that are here, they, they, they're completely bought in. They're all about winning. They're all about the team first. Uh, and. As a coach, it makes your job a lot easy. Like I'm not coaching them on, you know, playing the right way, or not, I'm not coaching effort. Like this, they're all in on those things every single day. Is there anything you learned from Coach K specifically on kind of having to do this reset of integrating a lot of freshmen and transfers on a year like this? I don't know if it's, uh, you know, we've gone pretty good at it because we do it a lot. I think this is the most new that we've had, uh, obviously including myself. But when you lose you know, eight of the 10 scholarship players from last year's team. And, uh, you know, Jeremy's the only guy returning that play. Jalen Blake's is coming back, which is really important for us. Uh, but it's it's more new than ever. And I think it's about just following your instincts. You know, each year has been different. Each year has been different of how we've had to mold the team and bring them together. And this year is no exception. So just really taking all the experiences that I've had at Duke, whether it be playing here, but especially coaching here because since I've been back, we've had to evolve and kind of figure out a new group every single year. John, what's your sense of how uh, Coach Case handling not being around practice and stuff like that? Yeah, he, he's he's at, at peace. He's in a great spot, and you know I can't believe how busy he is. You know he's you know every time I talk to him, he's in this spot or he's tra he's always traveling and uh, he has speaking engagements that he does. He's an ambassador for the school, uh, but I know he still has. A great investment in the success of our program and it's been an incredible it's been a healthy balance i'm sure there's part of him just like any competitor where when the you know first game or i don't know how he's going to feel i'm sure he doesn't even know but his support has been incredible for me and i'd be foolish not to use him as a sounding board as a resource from time to time while still being secure and going forward and following my instincts and uh, he's been he's been great with that. John, for, he, for the longest time, he's been not only the face of Duke, but he's been the face of ACC and the voice of the ACC and of college basketball. Sure. A lot of that comes with success, obviously, but you're now the coach at Duke. Is that something that you look to you know, to take on, to become maybe that face and that voice of the league of college basketball and that kind of thing? Yeah, for me, it's I, I'd be uh, – I'm not thinking about that. You know, it's uh, – 
I, I hope I'm in a position where I can make an impact and influence the game of college basketball, the ACC, all those things. But the best way to do that is to win and be successful. And for me, that's where my focus is at. What's best for Duke right now? What's best for our players? What's best for our team? And of course, I have a great investment in the future of our sport. Like that's a big deal to me. But uh, there's others who have done this for longer than I have that have great instincts and. You know, I follow their instincts right now, and hopefully I'm in a position where I can be that guy sometime. John, you mentioned having some empathy for Kenny Payne and what, what yeah. the emotions he feels. Is it striking at all to you that within the last 18 months, three programs in this league that have won multiple yeah. national championships, Duke, Carolina, and Louisville, have hired alums who played in Final Fours with no previous head coaching experience? It's just an interesting transition time. For the league and those yeah, I mean, it is it is interesting, and um, I think there's, for Huber, for Kenny, for myself, you know, when you can draw back on when you played at a certain school, right, and for each of us, obviously, that's different, but that experience allows you, it's authentic, you know, all three of us, we're not going into, you know, somebody's um, house or school and telling them to come to a school that we don't believe in. Right, like we went. I made this decision, right? They they made that decision for their school. So, I know we're all proud of where we come from, and to be here, it's a great responsibility and opportunity to lead our programs to the next chapter. John, when you're a master recruiter like you are, there is possibly going to be roster turnover every single year. Is that something that you're embracing, especially with the way the one and done era has been college basketball? Yeah, I mean, look, we're going to continue to recruit the best players, but also the, the right fit for what our program looks for. It's not just about the talent, but it's you know, it's the character, it's the it's the fit from a personality standpoint, and you know, we always ask, do they love it? You know, like our guys this year, they love it. You know, and then obviously, you look at, do they win? You know, and we've. We recruit winners as much as we can, but for us, we still want to have stability. And you know, having a Jeremy Roach back is—I can't speak to how important that is. I mean, it's incredibly important. Uh, you know, last year's team having a Wendell Moore as a junior, Mark Williams as a sophomore. Those guys are important for us too. Getting a Theo John, getting a Ryan Young this year in the portal, Jacob Grandison. So for us, it's that balance. It's not an exact science, obviously, but. When it comes to recruiting a certain level of player, you are uh, you do realize that there is going to be turnover. He talks about, I heard a lot about the breathing exercise you guys do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if it's old news now, but it's news to me. I mean, what is it called, and can you demonstrate? <laughs> <laughs> I could demonstrate it. I'm not going to. <laughs> but uh, a close friend of mine is Mike Posner, and uh, he came in and he uh, he showed us what Wim Hof breath work looks like. And uh, I don't know if you, you all have heard of Wim Hof or not, but it's this, uh, I'm not going to demonstrate it. I, I thought for a second, should I? But uh, we, we all did it as a team, and it's a pretty incredible feeling that uh, you kind of have to do. I can't explain it. You have to do it. Uh, but it definitely brought us closer together, and it was a fun day. How did that fit into kind of like, I don't know, you establishing your own culture, or was it just something you wanted to do? Was it like, did it have that significance, like trying to establish your own kind of brand? Or? You know, we had started... Uh, the Brotherhood CEO program, which is, you know, it's a it's a detailed program. We started last summer, uh, which basically it's it's all encompassing of anything that our players could experience outside of basketball, right? And we've had foreign managers, you know, different business people speak to them about the world they're going to be living in, uh, but also creating opportunities to bond as a team. And you know, we've done things, uh, giving back in the city of Durham or. Uh, with Duke University and that opportunity with Mike I thought was pretty unique you knowing his background and history and then uh, also the ability to be present is really hard for, for these guys and what they're going through and so just knowing the technique that can help you beyond just that morning uh, is something that I, I really valued and I think our players had a great experience with it. I, so I'm a fan of a lot of things. 90s R&B is definitely one of them. Okay, do you have any go-to groups that you listen to? So I actually, it's this is even before 90s, but I've always been, Luther Vandross for me has always been, it's been a go-to. I can't sing it, I can't dance to it necessarily, but I've always loved Luther. That's been, I'll say his, I'll take his voice above anybody's, and Luther's always been, um, 
been that guy for me. John, yeah. Hubert's, yeah. Probably, Hubert's probably the, one of the few people in the world who's been through something like you're going through now. I mean, last year, did you have sort of an eye on him and sort of how he handled everything? Is it hard to sort of talk to him about this kind of stuff because you are competitors? How, how does that sort of work between you? Well, first, I think there is, you know, mutual respect and, you know, I have admiration for what, you know, he did last year. I mean, he, he it's, not, it's not like you're smooth sailing, right? I mean, they went through ups and downs and he just stuck with it. And I think that's what, you know, really, that's what I plan on doing, no matter what. And, uh, you know, we ran into each other on the road and, you know, shared a good laugh about just, uh, I think there's a lot of empathy that we feel for one another. Yeah. And, uh, you know, of course, two different schools and still different situations, but uh, he's done a great job and, you know, I respect what he's done and, you know, the program he's building there. You've got a couple transfer portals. When you go into the, when you go looking for transfers, are you trying to fill a specific need with each one of those guys? Or are you trying to get the best player you can find there? How, how do you approach the portal? Yeah, it's the same thing just like we would out of high school. It's the fit, you know, and, you know, especially in the portal, you can have guys where it's, it's their time to be that guy. And for us, it's not about being that guy, but shining in a different role and, and being a part of a great team. And uh, the four guys we brought in, you know, Jacob and Ryan, we really recruited to play big roles on the court. They fit that to a T. They're blenders. They blend you know, with other really good players. They don't blend. They help our team blend. And, uh, you know, that may mean they could be a leading scorer one game, but they also, they just know how to play. Max Johns, Kel Catchings, they've really helped our culture. They've helped really uh, build what what it means to be a Duke basketball player, a college basketball player, and uh, that's something we'll have to continue to identify as we go on. You got a sense of what this team will be able to hang their hat on night in and night out? What did you say? I'm sorry. You got a sense of what this team will be able to do pretty well, hang their hat on night in and night out? It starts with defense for us. You know, we can be a really elite defensive team, and you know, scoring, we'll be able to score the ball, but I don't know if we have a guy who's going to be our leading scorer every night, or you know, it's not just we're going to, you know, Paulo and you can watch Paulo play at times, and we don't have that with this year's team. So, you know, elite defensively is a goal for us, and then sharing the ball and playing together on offense. And, of course, there's more specifics to that, but overall, you know, it starts there for us. Coach, what's, what's going to be the most intimidating factor you can overcome with this uh, new challenge ahead of you as first year head coach? I don't know if it's intimidating. I just think that's – I know it's a challenge. Like it's, I know it's not signing up for something that's easy. It's, it's, uh, you know, we have a great base, we have a great core, we have a great group of guys who are all in and ready to go. But you know, you know, you look at our schedule. Some, there's some big time challenges. You know, early on, and uh, you think about the the noise that can be around our program. I mean, it's been that way. I don't see it going away. Hopefully not. But hopefully it's because we're, you know, winning and being successful but for me I'll tell you the biggest challenge is is staying in the moment it's I think that's the biggest thing not worrying about what's said outside of our program I don't think it's about worrying about next week or you know I've been asked what do I want my legacy to be as a coach I don't know what I want my legacy to be you know I want to I want to win today I want to have a good practice and then move on to the next so I think that's the most important thing for me coach when you hear the word transition how does that resonate to you and philosophy of this year's basketball uh, team? Now for this year's team, again, it's for me being in the moment of this year's team. It's not about transitioning anymore. I think we've had to really focus on that in the off season and just transitions are hard. They're, they're, you don't see many, you know, uh, if you take all the successions in sport and business, whatever it may be, and I've studied them, it's more times than not, it's, it doesn't turn out the most successful. And so for me, I've just tried to make you know, every decision that we've made, balancing what's made our program who we are, and sticking to those values and that culture, but also being innovative in what college basketball in 2022 looks like and, and being authentic to myself. And so with the transition, with the transition we've had, I try to just be really authentic, be who I am, follow my instincts, follow our instincts as a staff, and uh, we've done a good job of that so far, and we need to continue. You brought in a general manager in. Yeah. Sorry, you brought in a general manager to kind of deal with NIL and some of those transition to 2022 college basketball. 
How has that gone, and, and what do you envision for that? Well, for me, it's less about the role and more about the person. And, you know, it's, it's who, not what. <laughs> and for me, it was about who Rachel Baker is as a person and her unique skill set and then figuring out, figuring out what role that could be for her to be a part of our program. And so, uh, again, I could be here all day talking about the amount of change in college basketball and our sport, but uh, Rachel's, her background of being in, you know, grassroots and understanding, you know, just how <laughs> dynamics of being a young player and making a decision for college basketball and having someone besides a head coach and of course, besides the coaching staff, that's thinking about roster management. Like that's a huge thing of what she's done, and uh, I think she's one of a kind. You can have the role, you can have the title, but who she is as a person is what made, is what's made that so unique for us. You mentioned following the instincts of, the, of your, your own, but also the staffs. For the first time in quite some time, Duke has some staff members from outside. The family. What went into that thinking? Is, is you kind of crafted your staff? Yeah. Well, uh, I'll speak on Jay Lucas, and he was, you know, really the first coach in some time, even though it's happened before, and coach did it earlier in his yeah. career. Uh, for me, it was came down to not specifically looking for someone outside the program. It was about finding the best person in that moment. And you know, I ended up having I ran into Jay on the road, and we had a conversation. And after talking to him, and I know his reputation as a recruiter, as a person, as a coach, uh, after talking to him, I said, this is a no-brainer. Like, he's, he's got it. And I don't think we'll have him on staff for so long because he's got head coach written all over him. And uh, I think he saw this opportunity to really impact our program from the ground level of, not the ground level of starting over with the program, but the fact that I'm a new head coach and, you know, I want him to be him. Like he's to follow his instincts. And then lastly, I value diversity of opinion, you know, and diversity of perspective. And Jay's worked for some big time head coaches, Shaka Smart, Rick Barnes, you know, Cal. And uh, so he's already he just has a different way of doing it. And so I like hearing that. And it's allowed us to make the decisions our best for this time here and now. Coach Shaw, speaking of team bonding activities, the State Fair starts tomorrow back in Raleigh. Are you all planning to go in and so what's your favorite go-to treat? <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's this time of the year, it's the worst time for me because it's all it's all about getting ready for the season. So I don't think I'll be making it out. Maybe these guys, but uh, as long as they're uh, ready for practice the next day, that's all I care about. So sorry I can't give you a better answer than that. <laughs> I literally haven't been to the State Fair, and I mean, even back in, you know, back in Chicago or here, I haven't, um, it's been so long, I can't even tell you. Yeah, you know, Jaden is, uh, he's got this, uh, great belief in himself. I think that's what's similar, you know, it's who I was as a player. And he never stops competing. He's always moving. And, you know, he can jump a lot higher than I did. I think he's a lot better shooter than I was. But, uh, you know, I'm proud of the development that he's had and his belief in us. And we have that same belief in him. But he's going to be a really good player for us. Tough folks you look for in the portal. How do you manage the portal? Jake was talking about how when he entered here, people right away because people on every staff watching the portal. Do you schedule 24-hour coverage, or how do you how do you handle the portal? Yeah, it's uh, that's it's new territory for us, right? That that hasn't been something we've done a lot in the past. In the last two years, we found that's a really good option for the right guy for us. But um, honestly, you just we have uh, our entire coaching staff knows to look out for it and. You know, we all knew we needed one more piece to the puzzle. And uh, when, you know, different names are brought up, and we always, we put a lot on the table, and more times than not, it's a no. And right away when his name, you know, went in there, it was a yes. It was an instant yes. And then you get to know him as a person and what he's about. Uh, then it became, we need to have him. We need, how can we, how soon can we get him here? And uh, so really fortunate with Jacob. Same thing happened with Ryan Young. Uh, Kale and, and Max were different situations, uh, but same thing. End of the day, like we wanted them at Duke, 
and uh, you know, really glad they made that they made that decision. They had other opportunities to go play somewhere. With with Durek out all this time of practice, how has that impacted how you kind of molded the the perimeter game, the ball handlers, that kind of thing? Who's well, there, you know? yeah, no, I mean it's it's definitely changes some things for our team, and you know you hope you can be in a better position. So by the time that Durek is back in in the mix, where you know other players have found something that they might not have found, or our team, we, we, we can see some things and learn about our group. So it's definitely uh, helped us in that regard. You know, you, you look at our team, we don't necessarily have a lot of guards. You know, you have Jeremy, you have Jalen, you have Tyrese as our ball handlers. We need to, we need Derek to be a ball handler for us as well. Uh, and now our, our, our wings, they can really handle too, but I think you, you see the need for Derek. You see how much better he can make us, but then also you, you, you're still trying to find some different things we might not have found elsewhere, and I think we're in the process of doing that. John, you mentioned having studied transitions right. like in sports, like outside of sports. Yeah. Right? yeah. Which, which ones have you studied, and what do you think you want to Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I could tell you, you know, down the line of, you know, naturally, you, you, you know, you uh, study Gene Bardo, you know, following John Wooden, right? I mean, that's just what he did, and again, it's a much different time, but I mean, I think, I haven't spoken to Gene, but just reading about what he said, I mean, he talks about the noise, you know, the noise that's in and around the pro program, and how do you stay laser focused in the task at hand? You know, I could go down the line of others that I've studied in sport, when I mean, you think about really successful ones, and you know, I was able to see Miami Heat work out recently, and Eric Spolstra, you know, she's seen with Pat Riley, right? and. Uh, like he's done an incredible job, first time head coach. Uh, I'd rather not talk about the ones, you know, just in business, but you know, you, I've been fortunate to see a few different ones that have succeeded and have taken it to new heights and then others not so much. And so for me, just knowing the perspective, I think the biggest thing that I learned studying different successions and different plans is you don't want to change too much too quickly. And we've been put in a position in the last six months where we've had to make some serious changes, but it's because of the landscape of college basketball. And the, the core of who we are as a program, the core of our values and what we stand for, that's, that's never going to change with me. Like That to me is a responsibility to carry it forward, but not with a crazy amount of change. Is this something in terms of the study that you've been doing the past? Summer, yeah, I, I did it actually uh, during uh, the interview process, you know, and you know, I, every night I was doing it, <laughs> every night just looking up different, different plans, uh, not plans, but different successions, different experiences, and talking to different people who I knew, and uh, that really helped me have a better understanding of the challenges that were ahead, but also. Uh, being very intentional about the decisions that we make. Going to the style of play I asked about in there, um, how how much does it play a factor that Derek and Kyle are versatile and being able to go out to the perimeter? How much does that kind of influence how much you can do with the rest of the lineup? Yeah, it's a big factor. I mean, it's it really starts first with who our team is, who our guys are, and we have a different kind of team. I, and I don't mean that. I mean that in a positive way. I mean, we, we can play a very unique style this year where it's, you know, we're not going to be a post-up team. We just don't have those kinds of players. And, uh, you know, you, you have, you know, Jeremy Roach and Tyrese Proctor in pick and roll would be really good. We're going to put them in pick and roll. Uh, and so I could go down the line. But for us, you know, we're, each day we personalize a little bit more because each day we find out a little bit more about this group. But the versatility and the uniqueness of our bigs, our guards, I think allows us to play, you know, really a NBA kind of style in college, and that's something we hope to, to be able to execute. As you as you learn about your guys like that, where, where do you fit uh, Derek into that? Because obviously not having him out there, you're a little further behind on knowing what he can do compared to the rest of the team, right? Well, we know he's capable of a lot, and I think it would be foolish for me to sit here and say that you know exactly how we're going to use Derek or how he fits in because he needs to go out there and do it and, and to see it and to learn more about him and on a day-to-day -day basis and uh, we'll get that opportunity soon and you know honestly I mean the season evolves each team evolves we have 
we have time for that to develop. We don't have time to, there's a sense of urgency right now, but as far as the evolution of our team, that's going to happen throughout the course of the season. Hi, Jennifer. Yeah, I really haven't noticed a change in our, in our guys. I can't speak to other, I don't know about other teams or other, or other players, but one, uh, it's an amazing thing because, you know, our guys have had the opportunity to, you know, when you think about the travel for families to come, you know, visit, when you think about, you know, lodging and you think about, you know, some of our guys, their backgrounds, just being able to be more comfortable before, of course, they, most of our guys have big aspirations of being drafted after a year and going high, and that's a significant amount of money. But what they've been able to do now is a big deal. As far as the change, I haven't noticed a change. I sense still as big of a hunger as ever. Uh, team chemistry, it's been rock solid with this group. And no matter NIL aside, you always have you know, playing time. Steve's playing more than I am. I'm playing more than he is. There's, there's, so I don't know how much they talk about personally, but it's, it's been a great thing, and uh, uh, I've, been, I can't tell you any significant change or anything that I've noticed with it. Yeah. Thanks. Coach. Thanks. You had to straddle the line between obviously Duke has a history of success, and it's got a foundation. You want to carry a lot of those things over. We're also trying to put some ownership on things that you might want to be different. And what are some of those things that have been important to you to sort of instill and say, hey, you know, these are valuable to me. These are important. To me. I, I think uh, you can't make the right decision if you're not informed in the first place. And I try to make sure that I'm making decisions from an uh, informative standpoint. And, you know, I really want my coaches, people on staff to push me, to challenge me, and they have. And that's something that I've welcomed. But then, honestly, at the end of the day, you have to follow your instincts. You can't overthink it. You have to make too many decisions on the fly. And so the preparation has been key in that and, and really having a great understanding of who I am, more importantly, who our program is. And then, um, you know, you're going to make decisions that you don't, we're not going to make any decisions to be different just to be different. And we're not going to make decisions just because we've done something for a long time just to do it. But the, the, the values, the core of our program, the, I'm always making decisions to, to carry that forward. <laughs> I think so. I haven't seen the puppy. I haven't seen him in some time, but I think so. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate it.